Okay. Yeah, it wasn't very good, so yeah. All right, and uh, for, first, I know we had this issue last year. Uh, can everyone please, who's uh, listening in, uh, please hit mute on your computer so we don't have the, the feedback. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone again. Our, our goals uh, for tonight and for this presentation are to uh, introduce the key project staff. We'll start out with that. Um, and then we just wanna review the scope of work of the construction project. We're gonna start big and, and talk about the overall streetscape planning, the multiple phases, and then zoom in on what we're, what, what's gonna be constructed this year. Uh, then we wanna talk about what, what a lot of people care about, which are the project impacts during construction. Uh, and, and we wanna hear from folks about project concerns. We did have the morning meeting, so we got a lot of feedback at that. Um, and we appreciated that information. And, and um, Again, please feel free to chat in with your questions or at the end, we'll open it up to questions as well. And with that, I just want to introduce the, the project team. So uh, my name is Derek Peebles. I'm the assistant village engineer. I am newer, I uh, just started up this year with the village. My past uh, experience was with the city of Des Plaines, um, was with a city for about 20 years. And we had a, we had a streetscaping, uh, Project also went through five phases, uh, so we have experience from that that I'm bringing to it. Although it was, it was complicated, and, uh, we didn't have all the tools going here. And I've got a little bit of feedback, so if everyone, I lost the. Uh, okay, mute capability. Okay, all right. So uh, yeah, that's me. Um, also in the room here, folks can see we have Meredith Hanna. Uh, economic development coordinator. Uh, she has been, she's really taking on the big role of coordinating with a lot of businesses, has been working and, and giving folks uh, information in advance of this through the last year's streetscaping. Um, so she has been a very valuable uh, person for us to have on this project. Uh, also, not on the, not on the uh, slide specifically, but uh, the village engineer, Rich Dalbert, is here and will be speaking. Uh, in the second half of this presentation. Uh, then moving down the slide, BLA, the, the village has hired BLA as the construction engineer. The, we're, we're fortunate to have them back. They were on the phase one streetscaping effort, did a great job, and they're bringing last year's experience to this phase two, three. Um, so we, we're, we're very fortunate to have uh, that returning team. Uh, so from BLA, resident engineer Clay Keller, who's in the room here, um, some of you may know him, but Clay and I have been going out and, and visiting different businesses and that. We still have uh, some ground to cover, but uh, for those we haven't seen yet, we look forward to meeting you. Uh, helping out Clay will be the construction engineer, John McHugh. Uh, he's Clay's assistant. He'll also be out throughout the streetscaping. One moment. You can come in. Are you here for streetscaping? Are you here for streetscaping? Yeah, yeah, come on in. Thank you. That. And then uh, also from the BLA team, uh, Public Information Representative Ashley, she's doing a lot of assistance with weekly updates that we're providing, helping us out get exhibits, detour exhibits and that. So, and then uh, the contractor through the bid process, the low bid, lowest qualified bidder process, uh, the contract for this streetscaping was awarded to ALAMP. Again, very fortunate to have the returning team. They were the contractor on the phase one streetscaping, did a great job on that. Uh, again, bringing their experience from phase one to this uh, north side of the track. So we're, we're, we're happy about that. And the project manager for ALAMP, Anthony Aculo, apologize for the pronunciation, and the project superintendent, who's going to be really out on the site a lot with, with all of us, uh, Dean Marzuli. And then this is a little bit of a repeat, but we want to talk about the key contact information. Our goal on this is to really be accessible. Uh, there are lots of complications. Streetscaping construction is is difficult, and so we want to uh, we want to be available as the village to to answer questions concerned. So general number public works department is is up there. You know, for the most part, that's there as a reference. But for the streetscaping project, um, myself and Clay are really going to be the point people. Uh, Clay is as the village's resident engineer. Um, he's going to be out on the site day to day working with the contractor. So items that come up with uh, you know, issues during the construction as it's going on, uh, he's the good person to go to. Uh, I will be the village point person. Uh, so I'm not always gonna be on the site 
and, and so for that type of stuff, like if you have other issues, you can come to me. But either way, Clay and I are in communication. And so if you reach out to one of us, both of us will end up knowing uh, about it. So we're, we're both there as opportunities. A question has come up about after hours. Uh, the, the construction work occurs during the daytime primarily. There will be some exceptions for the most part, it's Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. are the contract hours. Uh, often they'll be ending a little bit earlier than that, but there are exceptions to that. And so um, for the most part, that's when there may be issues that pop up overnight before the contractor leaves. We look to have the site wrapped up and that. So we don't intend and typically don't have issues in the evening. If you do have issues in the evening, um, we, we, we do ask often if it's an emergency kind of issue, call 911. If, if you know, we get a windstorm, something happens, something blows, something that's, that's urgent, uh, call 911 and that's probably the best bet to get something addressed. Um, Otherwise, again, uh, Clay is is the sort of day to day person on the project to uh, handle more urgent matters. We've got somebody not on mute. Sorry to be calling people out, but <laughs> trying to manage this uh, as best we can. Um, okay, project uh, project location map. So for folks who aren't familiar, this is something that's been in planning by the village for a long time. Uh, the, the construction we're looking at now is going to be a phase two. So last year, phase one occurred on the project. Okay, so last year, uh, phase one was largely completed. So Dwayne Street, Main Street were completed. Hillside Avenue has some work that's carrying over into this year. And then uh, the next, the phase two and three, the blue lines and the purple lines, those were bid out together this year uh, because of the sort of interdependency of the utilities on those those street segments it made sense there were great efficiencies for the village to bid that out together as one package so it's a two-year construction package uh, that will be working with the contractor a lamp and with bla as the consultant construction engineer and then the final the green the final phases is is really tied in with the village's discussion about the train station redevelopment and the pedestrian underpass um, and for efficiencies, those streetscaping segments make sense to go along with that project as the discussion, but those are a little bit further out in the future. Okay, and then just zooming into our, our current work, again, phase two, three, we're bit out together, but for this 2023 construction year, it's gonna be phase two that we're focused on. And that's really what we'll be talking about today. Next year, when phase three is launching, there'll be another you know, set of meetings like this. So we're talking about Main Street from the railroad tracks uh, north to Anthony, Pennsylvania Avenue from Prospect over to Main Street, and then Crescent Boulevard from Glenwood to Main are the focus. Okay, and I did wanna make mention that coincident with the, the village's streetscaping construction, there is a, an, uh, a private development occurring at the, what would be the northwest corner of uh, Crescent and Glenwood shown by the the picture in the, the lower left. Uh, that's a 86 unit apartment building with some ground floor retail. And that is kind of similar to the phase one streetscaping where the apex um, uh, residential building was going up. So we will we'll be working, the village will be working with that private development team, um, attending each other's meetings, keeping abreast of, of what's happening with each project. So we, we're coordinated, but just so people know that is a separate project from the village's streetscaping but it is going to be a current coincident during these two years. Okay, so on to um, the, the work that we'll be seeing as part of the streetscaping. The first thing we wanna talk about are the utility adjustments. Uh, and, and for this slide, we're talking about the non-village utilities. So we're talking about gas, power, communications cables. So these are not controlled by the village. Uh, as part of the streetscaping, uh, these NICOR, it's sort of coincident with streetscaping, NICOR is going to be upgrading its gas main throughout the downtown. And it's it's depicted by the yellow line. So they're pretty much covering and it makes sense to do it as part of the streetscaping when they look at their lines, they wanna upgrade, modernize so that there's no need to do any of this after our streetscaping is in. We don't want the street torn up for that. So that's gonna be a current coincident. Uh, ideally, this is advanced work um, that happens, but in order to compress the construction timeline and just the way things are going, it's going to be happening at the same time as the village's work. So there will be shuffling around where NICOR's crews are putting in Maine uh, and, and the village's crews are gonna be working in a different location and that's gonna need to be coordinated, which adds to the complexity, but it will compress the time frame of the 
overall construction. Other thing to mention, ComEd and at and they're not you know, replacing all their lines and there are other communications in the downtown, uh, but there are locations where there are conflicts with new uh, village utilities going in. And so there's gonna be work by them out uh, with some relocations coincident with the construction. And then they'll be doing potholing to explore, find out exactly where their lines are so we can identify the, the conflicts. Moving on to the village utility improvements. So here we're talking about the sanitary sewer, uh, storm sewer, water main, the big ones. Street lights are mentioned because they have the underground conduit uh, powering the street lights. And then the tree plantings, irrigation systems that are also running underground. Uh, so these are big components of the project. We could argue this is a big driver of the overall streetscaping. So people think of the streetscaping with the, the brick pavers and the such, and it, it adds value to the downtown. Um, a big need in the downtown is, is to replace uh, you know, the current underground utilities, water main on Main Street is over 100 years old. Uh, what happens is we get failures, breaks that occur. So uh, those those facilities are in need of, of updating and um, we're gonna pop into that a little more in the next slides. So sanitary sewer, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna go fully into detail, but generally the streets through the streetscaping are, are having replacement of sanitary sewer. And I will step back and say that the, the village had a uh, extensive study done Prior to this, with the televising of sewers, uh, you know, investigating and, and determining what needed replacement, uh, what could be lined, what was actually already in good shape and could be lined to modernize it and extend its life. Um, and so there's a combination of things happening, but there's a lot of the sanitary sewer that is being uh, replaced. And that'll be a lot of underground work we see as in the photo. Storm sewer uh, is the next. Storm sewer, uh, it's a combination for storm sewer of Re replacement and then additional like relief sewers to improve the drainage through downtown. This picture is depicting sort of giving an example of the size of some of them. The picture is actually from a, a past project, a little bit larger, but in some locations, Maine and Pennsylvania, the storm sewer going in is a 60 inch diameter, so five foot. So it's going to be large. Um, and, it, you know, that's that's why, as we'll get into in a bit, you know, we need some some street closures uh, in order to accomplish some of this work. Uh, it also, as part of this, uh, well, let me let me go into the water main improvement. So the water main or the third big underground utility. Uh, again, there are a lot of old pipes underground that are needing replacement for reliability, along with the water main. You got the valves and new fire hydrants, and then this is an impact that we will work with uh, each individual building with on the water services. So while replacing the water main, um, we also will be replacing services. And uh, the services, basically, when we talk about that, that is the sort of 90 degree pipe, smaller pipe that is serving the individual property um, along the water main. So uh, those involve some shutoffs. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, generally, for smaller ones, can be about two hours. For the bigger transfers, four to six hours. That will all be closely coordinated with each individual property or in advance of any, uh, any interruptions. Uh, we do make mention here, and I think it's going to be talked about by Rich a bit, but uh, it, it's not unusual to have water main breaks given the, the age of the water main and the construction work going on during um, construction. And so those will be unanticipated water outages. It, it happens. Um, the village will work to quickly repair those as they happen, but we just want to give people a heads up. Okay, so then the... Uh, we covered underground utilities. The, the next big aspect of the project is the roadway rehabilitation. So uh, for this project, it's mostly a reconstruction of the roadway. So taking the roadway down all the way to the subgrade or the soil, uh, and then building it back up with stone um, and the, uh, the asphalt. The um, exception is one stretch of the 2024 stretch of Pennsylvania that is west of Prospect where that is going to be with the, the pavement condition being in, in better shape, that is, is going to be a, a, a milling and a resurfacing, you know, two inch, two and a quarter inch binder and two inch surface course. So, uh, but for the most part through the project, it is a full reconstruction of the roadways. And then we get to the, th the thing that everyone will notice at the end, um, and that has had a lot of discussion is the uh, actual surface streetscaping work consisting of the sidewalk replacement, uh, the brick pavers, soil cells, granite, we'll talk about that a bit, uh, the very street furniture, like benches, bike racks, trash receptacles, the new trees, we'll talk about that, uh, lawn restoration where there is lawn, it's not as much in the historic plaques. Um, the materials that were used in the phase one streetscaping on the south side of the tracks, uh, that those same materials are being carried forward to the north side of the tracks. 
I'm talking about the trees. Folks who have been out and about noticed from Monday, Tuesday, the tree removal, uh, the first step. Um, the first thing, there was a, a lot of advanced work done that, on this investigation of the current condition of the trees. And basically on these type of modern streetscaping projects, it is, it is the standard to remove uh, the existing trees. Uh, the way that trees were planted in the past um, limited their lifespan, uh, you know, impacted their health. So the trees that are out there already show signs in, in the, in, you know, the, the honey locust from what we've kind of heard, well, in nature will last 120 years in streetscaping environments with the uh, impinged roots in that. They do not, you get 40 years out of them. These trees are, are getting to that point. You see die, you die back in some of the, the leaf tips and I'm speaking out of my depth, but from talking with the foresters and that, the, um, uh, some, some fungi on it. But the bottom line is when putting in the streetscape and doing the construction, this need utility construction, the likelihood is that th these trees would not survive. So it is pretty standard throughout the region and beyond that when you do this sort of generational streetscaping, you start over uh, with the trees because otherwise you might be five years down the road tearing out trees and, and damaging what you had just replaced. So there is information we want to point to on the website that gives better background in the advanced work that was done. Uh, the downtownge.com, and that'll be uh, indicated later in here, and we're trying to put it out everywhere, but that is the project website. And there is a link, there are four different pages on there. One is for the urban forest, gives the background on that. And we've got one more slide on this talking about the modern treatments. So what happens with the modern streetscaping efforts is there are, uh, in, the, in the little picture on the left shows sort of the old scenario where you've got small tree grate, uh, the trees were planted and they don't have anywhere to go with their roots. And that impacts the health. Either the roots do grow out and heave the sidewalk or the trees are just impaired. Uh, the modern um, the modern solution to that are soil cells. If people got out during the streetscape, phase one streetscape, they might've seen these go in. The um, What it allows the, the tree is, it allows additional room for the roots to grow through these. Um, these. And these, you won't see these once the, the brick pavers and concrete is put back. Uh, but the soil is under there for the trees to expand into. It allows the trees to mature more quickly. So we start out with a small canopy, but they do get bigger more quickly. They live longer, healthier. Um, there are granite uh, planter curbs that also help the trees by reducing the salt, the de-icing agent getting into the tree root system. And the other thing is a mix of species. And the, in, in the old paradigm, it used to be the same species planted through, and that's what we have a lot of in, in the village here that makes the trees susceptible to disease when that comes through and can wipe them all out. So the new, you know, modern approach is that there's a mix of tree species. Again, that's covered on the, on the website. Okay, so I just wanna um, draw attention to also on the website under the project updates page, as part of the phase one streetscaping, there was a uh, five minute animation video. Uh, I encourage people to go check it out, which, you know, shows the general order of construction uh, you know, generally, as we kind of went through, it's the underground utility work that happens first, then the roadway pavement, curb and gutter removal, allows for the soil cells, light poles to go in, roadway base, binder. Then the sidewalks are installed last, um, half and half. Sidewalks remain open through construction uh, with some exceptions, but generally the access to businesses and the sidewalks is retained. Um, and then the final thing are the streetscaping elements, the surface treatments and the trees go. So the video is a great watch. Uh, so folks can see what's coming if they weren't familiar with the phase one streetscaping. So again, want to emphasize that through this, while there are roadway closures for traffic because we need this underground utility work happening, sidewalks and access to the businesses remain open throughout. The, the small exceptions when particular driveways are being worked on or the underground cuts are going, uh, we work with the businesses on those interruptions individually. Okay, so the overall construction sequencing, uh, there is more complexity with this phase two and three work than with the phase one with the, the utilities working with the, the gas main replacement throughout coincident with the streetscaping construction. Uh, but in the, the aims, the aims of the city, the dual, the dual aims of the village are number one, supporting the downtown as it is, the existing businesses, supporting the stakeholders through this construction process. Um, and at the same time, keeping the construction moving because we want this to get done quickly uh, and get out. We, we have uh, target dates to hit September 29th being an interim completion date for Main Street segment. 
So you are going to see, people will see a lot of movement in the phasing and that just to keep the contractors moving and to coordinate with the different contractors that are out there. Uh, but again, we anticipate coordinating this throughout. And, uh, talk about that in a moment. So really, there are just two kind of major stages in this year's construction. The first that we'll be seeing soon, um, actually next, next week, I'll have a slide quickly coming up on that, where uh, Pennsylvania in purple here uh, between Maine and Prospect will be going to one way westbound. And half of that street is gonna be worked on at a time. But starting next week, we're gonna see the beginnings of the village's utility work. At that same time, NICOR is going to be coming in and, and we don't have exact schedules. There's a meeting on Monday to really get their schedule, but they're gonna be starting on Main Street with their work. Uh, I think I mentioned their, their work is by directional boring, not all open cut. So there's gonna be less impact and the roadway doesn't need to close. There will just be uh, small local closures for their, their boring pits um, and potholes. So this is really about the next six weeks is estimated, but again, there is gonna be fluidity in the schedules. And so we're, we're always gonna be giving a week to outlook ahead to let people know what's coming. So then this, this second big sequence, which is really gonna persist through this, the, this year is um, in, in the, the streets in purple again are gonna be work on one half of the street at a time. It'll shift between North and the South. Uh, the main street, from Anthony to Pennsylvania. It's gonna go one way southbound. Again, Pennsylvania will be one way westbound. And the segment of Crescent um, between Glenwood and Maine is gonna go one way eastbound. That's gonna complement the already in place pattern for the Glenwood station development where uh, Crescent on this block is, is one way eastbound. And, and again, this, is gonna, this will be through most of this year's construction. Uh, well, I guess the key thing I didn't point out, Orange, is where Main Street is going to be closed completely to traffic. But again, the sidewalks will remain open. Access to businesses is, is uh, uh, maintained there. So uh, this is just a quick example of a sample kind of detour exhibits that we intend to put out with the weekly updates. So communication from the village uh, on a weekly basis, in addition to the other things we we tend to meet with, well, we have a standing meeting with the contractor and construction team on Wednesday mornings. Uh, that's where we get the look ahead for the next four weeks, two weeks, one week. Um, out of that meeting on Thursday mornings, we have a Zoom meeting that's open to stakeholders, public. Uh, we publish that out. If people are not on the email list already, uh, please reach out to me, uh, Derek Peoples, uh, to let me know your email. We tried to kind of spread the net, but we, we can get you on the list for the Zoom meetings for the, the, the emails. But so Thursday mornings, we have a weekly uh, Zoom where we will give a quick update on the project status and then are open to questions. Um, on Fridays, then we send out the weekly update email with the you know, look ahead for construction. And at the same time, Friday, we post to the website, the project website, the updates. So uh, get that out there. Parking is gonna be a big topic. Obviously the, par the village parking committee has, has been working on this. this, And um, the there is gonna be a map produced that's, uh, that folks can use to help communicate it, right? What we're showing here is the, uh, the map from the village's parking website, GIS parking website. We're encouraging folks to go to the uh, village's general parking website where information is gonna be pushed and get to it. But uh, key, key, t key notes here uh, in the lot number two, let's see where the cursor is. Uh, parking was in advance converted additional uh, three hour customer parking was opened up in this red area. Uh, so that will replace when Main Street gets closed, on street parking is, is closed. Uh, that's a place where uh, customers can park nearby, walk down to businesses. Similarly, in lot three down by the tracks and lot 11, the three hour meters, the pay meters that are there are gonna be bagged shortly. And so those will be open to the three hour, uh, excuse me, three hour customer parking as well. Um, in addition to that, the village is monitoring the permit parking occupancy. Again, there's gonna be fluidity here in adjusting to conditions. Uh, in, in, in order to direct people to the parking, some green banners as shown in the picture here have been installed. We're gonna be putting up additional signage that can kind of go into the, the roadway area where the detours are so that it's even more visible to try to help customers find the parking. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be working uh, 
with businesses to keep identifying if, if any issues arise or we need additional capacity. In general, there is capacity in the downtown, but as people are probably very familiar, um, you know, the, the railroad tracks can be, uh, uh, you know, more of a challenge. And so there's, there are the parking garages on the south side of the tracks or additional parking lots uh, like the U.S. Bank, uh, but folks may not want to walk there, but we always do have those relief valves as needed. Um, but we'll need to educate folks on where, where they can park. So just a uh, near term, near term construction schedule, just to leave people with an idea what's going on this, this week, April 3rd, we obviously had the tree removal, temporary lighting poles have been installed that people see that having gone on. Um, next week is when that first stage of Pennsylvania going to one way westbound begins with some underground utility work, all the signage will be up in place. And the NICOR gas main work may also start on Main Street, but does not involve uh, full roadway closures. Main Street will still be open to southbound traffic. And then the Glenwood Station construction, um, they have their traffic staging in place, but they're still gearing up for full construction at this point. So we may not see too much activity out there. Um, and then with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Rich Daubert, village engineer. Yeah. Okay, good evening, everyone. Rich Daubert, uh, Village Engineer with Glen Ellen Public Works. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what you can expect on this construction project, which will be a little bit of everything. I think starting off kind of big picture, you know, generally speaking on our construction projects, we allow the contractors to work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, based on, on last year's project, as well as our discussions with the contractor on this year's project, um, the, the work hours are more likely going to be about seven to five or six o'clock in most situations. Uh, having said that, there may be times when they're trying to wrap up a utility, uh, some utility work, such as replacing a service for a business. Um, we also have the Dooley Health uh, Center that we have to be mindful of in terms of uh, their water service needs. So there might be some exceptions to that. Um, as far as Saturday work goes, generally speaking, early on in the project, probably won't see a lot of Saturday work as we start to uh, wrap up the utility construction and we start to start the uh, actual street construction work. Um, that becomes more probable, more likely. You know, we might, uh, last year in particular, we had some challenges with getting some of the materials like aggregate and concrete. And so we really had to be flexible and work some Saturdays where we might not have seen a lot of work get done. Um, just a couple hundred feet of curb and gutter, et cetera, but that allowed us to pave the following uh, week and get the street open. So uh, Saturday work will occasionally happen. Uh, other general nature of work, we've got, you know, there's gonna be noise on this project, uh, dust, disturbance of parkway areas. One of the common complaints that we do get, a legitimate complaint is, you know, with con construction noise before 7 a.m. Um, that's something that, you know, our resident engineer will work closely with the contractor on. But if that does happen, again, you know, feel free. Uh, we don't want a lot of calls, but feel free to, you know, call the police uh, 911. Um, that, that is the way that they get these issues resolved in terms of citing the contractor. That's, that's the way to reinforce them from not doing that. Obviously, we can do that as well, but a lot of the times it's outside of hours. That is, so that is a common complaint that we get. Um, just to be aware of that. So there is a mechanism, mechanism in place for that. One of the other things that uh, is also not always well understood on these projects is, you know, work is completed in phases. And what we mean by that is the contractor is going to work on, you, you know, they're going to be working on the north side of, of Pennsylvania Avenue, for example, to start. Then they're going to move to the south side. They're going to move off of Pennsylvania and then onto Main Street. We really try to get the work done in phases. In other words, get all the utility, underground utility work completed, and then we start building the street. So you're going to see the contractors kind of bouncing back and forth in different areas of the project. Sometimes people will ask, why don't you finish all the work on one block and then move on to the next? Uh, that would just simply protract the project. It would, it would take a lot longer to complete construction. It'd be a lot more disruptive over time. So that's why that happens. Um, there's a very specific specific method that's used. The contractor starts with the deepest utilities and then works their way up to the shallower utilities. So just be 
uh, mindful of that. And again, if there's something that just doesn't make sense, feel free to reach out to Clay and, and Derek and they'll be able to uh, most logically explain that to you um, and hopefully explain that to you and address that. Uh, other factors, there's gonna be um, a lot of materials that are gonna be dropped off for this project. So we showed that picture uh, earlier on in the presentation, the 84 inch storm sewer pipe uh, that was strung out on the roadway. We've got a uh, 60 inch pipe as well as 36 inch storm sewer that's gonna be installed on Pennsylvania Avenue. The contractor's gonna have to lay that out down the street. So that's gonna take up a lot of room. Um, they're gonna be you know, offloading that onto, uh, from trucks onto the street. They're gonna have their uh, semis that they're gonna be loading the dirt into to dig the trench. And then they're gonna be dropping that, the pipe into the trench and putting stone in. So there's gonna be a lot of activity in the roadway, be prepared for delays. So um, what we always tell people is again, look at using alternate routes. You know, Western Avenue and Prospect are not gonna be under a lot of disruption uh, this year. So obviously if you're coming into the CBD, if, you're, if you come down Main Street, be prepared for some delays. If you, if you come down uh, Western Avenue, you're going to be in a better position. Um, or if, you, if you're if you coming uh, north and heading into the CBD from the south, use Park Ooh. Boulevard. You know, try to, try to work your way around that way. I'm um, sorry, could everyone check their uh, microphones right now and make sure that they're muted? I think it's Shannon's iPad right now. Oh, Brando. Brando. Yeah, it's not in here. Oh, it sounds like they've re we've resolved that right now. Um, other things that are gonna be happening, concrete placement, asphalt paving. Again, as Derek said, what we did in the first phase was we got that utility work done and then we built the street. Um, and we wanted to do that so we could get traffic back on there as well as we could use the street as our alternate pedestrian route. So that's what'll happen early on in the project. And then we'll move into the sidewalk and furniture zone areas. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, please use routes away from operating equipment to avoid frustration. Uh, one, of the, one of the challenges I foresee on this project is going to be on Pennsylvania Avenue. You know, for folks that are parking in that Pennsylvania West lot that's next to the fire station, um, we're really going to discourage people from walking mid-block right across the street because we have a lot of utility work that's going to be going on there. So we're going to want people to really use the controlled intersections. It's going to be the safest way for you to get across the street. So just try to do that um, and, and re reinforce that to your customers. Uh, consider parking outside of the, the construction area. Again, early on in the project, Pennsylvania and Main Street, you're gonna see a lot of activity on that. Um, if folks are, are heading and in, in patronizing some of the businesses that are more at the south end of Main Street, closer to the UP West line, might wanna look at that Crescent and Glenwood lot and, and utilizing that earlier on in the project. Um, but again, that's not going to, you know, accommodate all the businesses, especially those that are a little bit further north on, on Pennsylvania Avenue. But just when you can, you know, consider parking outside of the construction areas. This is Delane here. Okay, in terms of roadway access, uh, we are going to have posted detours. Um, basically, long story short, we're gonna maintain that counterclockwise circulation that we have in downtown Glen Ellen. So Pennsylvania is gonna be one way westbound for the majority of the project. Um, and then if you're gonna to wanna to head your way back to the east, you'll, you'll be detoured basically down Prospect to Crescent and then have to go ahead and, and head east down Crescent. So we'll have sign detours. Uh, we will also have reduced uh, speed signs out there, 15 mile an hour for construction. Um, so there'll be a lot of signage will be a little bit overwhelming, but we typically do try, try to provide signage for, you know, driveways and the, in the public parking lots. So uh, we will be maintaining roadway access as much as possible. When we go to actually construct the street, we're going to construct half at a time. So we'll have to maintain, you know, traffic on one half of the street. There's also a significant grade differential because we're changing the elevation of some of the roadways pretty significantly to improve the ADA access. Um, so that's another thing, uh, but generally speaking, uh, we will be maintaining access as much as possible during the course of the project. There will be an exception 
earlier on in the project when we're installing this large diameter storm sewer across the intersection of Maine and Pennsylvania, uh, we are going to have to completely close Main Street at Pennsylvania, so we will have detours in place for that. Uh, we will get those out. Um, Derek will be sharing those uh, via our weekly updates, but we'll also work with uh, our communications coordinator on getting that message out on the village's social media channels. Driveway access, there's going to be uh, lost driveway access as we're installing utilities down Pennsylvania Avenue, for example, even our fire company, we're going to be digging a, a 16 foot deep trench right across their driveway. Um, that's going to continue west all the way down to Glenwood. Um, so we, there will be uh, driveway access that gets lost, but we will get that restored, generally speaking, by the end of the working day. Uh, there'll be driveway access that's lost during the actual roadway construction work as well, when we're placing curb and gutter and driveway approaches. Um, there may be some driveways that we can construct one half at a time. We really don't like to do that, though. We like to get everything, basically close the access point place the concrete and open it up as quickly as we can. So um, that is what we'll strive to do. It's just less of an impact to you overall and a better product. Um, but we're obviously going to be mindful of the different business needs. So again, Clay and, and Derek uh, will be talking to the, the business owners about those uh, impacts and coordinating accordingly. Same thing for, uh, I know, uh, one of the, the questions and concerns came up with Churchill condominiums um, and their access off of Main Street. I think that's one where we can build half at a time. It makes sense with the ramp going up to the, the parking deck. But we will be coordinating with, um, with that group as well. In terms of parking, uh, generally speaking, as I was uh, alluding to before, there's going to be a lot of equipment in the street. And it's going to be a challenge just to maintain a, a reasonable work area for the contractor and then keep traffic flowing, um, as well as accommodate delivery trucks. That's something that's very important. Um, so we're going to start off in the early on in the project and kind of set the tone that we don't want any on street parking on the streets that are under construction. As we get further along through the project, we'll review that. There may be opportunities to, to afford some of that, um, but we really want to focus on allowing the contractor to get in there get as much work done as possible, maintain traffic in the downtown. Um, and then obviously, you know, that will allow us to get the work, you know, completed more quickly and get things open back up. Uh, parking in off-street parking lots is therefore gonna be encouraged. Uh, where on-street parking is allowed, just be mindful, park legally, face in the correct direction, don't block fire hydrants, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, avoid parking too close to driveways. <clears throat> we are gonna be, uh, working, it's going to be very dynamic, but we're going to be, as I mentioned before, uh, providing uh, basically areas, uh, staging areas for deliveries. Um, there's going to be also some areas in some of the uh, parking lots that are going to be dedicated for uh, curbside pickup, et cetera. If someone needs to run in and out and real, real quickly grab something. So we're working on uh, putting those accommodations in place as well. Uh, Derek talked about uh, some of the utility disruptions, primarily uh, on the water related side. Um, so generally speaking, we're going to have to do some larger scale shutdowns to, to build the new water main to connect to the existing water main. Those are going to be about four to six hour shutdowns. Notices will be provided. We're going to provide as much notice as we can. A lot of times we will try to schedule those for Mondays. We know the, the downtown's a lot quieter on Mondays, so we'll try to do that. Uh, when we go, when we actually complete the construction of the new water main, we'll still have the old one live, um, but we'll pressure test, disinfect, and sample the new water main, and then we will start transferring individual businesses um, and residences to the new water mains. Uh, some of those service transfers, if it's a copper pipe, if it's a smaller diameter copper pipe, those are going to go quickly. Um, if it's larger diameter or we need to replace the line into the building, uh, those are going to take a little bit longer to do, but generally speaking, if it's a simple, a straightforward service transfer, about two hours. If it's more complex, probably four to six hours. Um, something that we, we, we do do as part of these projects is we're upgrading the water services so that they're at least two inches into all of the buildings. And if it's a larger diameter cast iron pipe, we're also working, we're trying to work with all the building owners to replace those lines all the way into the building. 
again, as Derek mentioned, we don't want to be digging things back up down the road. So we're really trying to, to properly rehab all the infrastructure. So there'll be a lot of coordination on that end. Notification will be provided. Uh, at the same time, we are going to have water main breaks on this project. I mean, the, the existing water main out there is 116 years old on Main Street, as well as on sections of Pennsylvania. And sadly, some of the newer main on Crescent Boulevard is, the, is in, in even worse condition. Uh, then those mains are going to break during construction. So there will be some unanticipated uh, water main breaks. As we mentioned in our meeting this morning, be prepared, have bottled water. Um, we will get those, you know, repairs when those unanticipated main breaks occur. We'll, we'll have those repairs completed as quickly as possible. Um, a lot of times when the main itself breaks, we can fix it very fast. If it's a service line that get, you know, wasn't marked correctly, um, et cetera, those can take a little bit longer to repair if we have to replace a service line. Uh, but we will work with the affected properties and, and try to get the water back on as quickly as we can. Just be prepared for that. Other utility outages, um, as Derek mentioned, you know, NICOR is going to be replacing the gas mains and services out there. Um, so there will be scheduled uh, work, you know, outages for that, primarily on the service side. Again, it's also possible, though, that gas mains get struck and damaged. And, and you know, we have gas main and service line breaks on these projects. Um, so that's something to be prepared for. If that happens, if we have your contact information, we'll try to get in touch with you. And, you know, if there is, uh, you know, some type of utility service that's damaged to a building, uh, with respect to NICOR, NICOR will not turn the gas back on unless you have a representative there that's an adult. Um, so a, a lot of times, like if someone's not there on a Monday, um, please make sure we have, you know, your contact information if your business is shut down, and we'll do what we can to try to make sure that someone can get back in there and we can get that. The gas relit um, so that you can be back in business on on Tuesday, etc. Uh, phone, cable, electric. We already had a electric cable that got damaged, an uh, electric cable from the 1940s that got damaged and resulted in an electrical outage um, uh, at Main and Crescent. So that's bound to happen again. Um, as far as sewer service goes, you know, building drainage that generally speaking shouldn't be interrupted. Um, having said that, it's it's possible there could be backups, et cetera. Let us know if that happens. Contact Clay um, if you if you do happen to notice something peculiar with your sewer service. We want to obviously try to investigate that and rectify that as quickly as possible. Uh, mail and garbage delivery. Mail should you know continue as normal. Um, However, we, you know, we encourage use of the post office. Uh, some of this is tailored more to our residential projects, but again, just generally speaking, uh, we have been coordinating with the post office. There will be some, um, some changes that will need to be made with respect to their drop-offs, uh, as well as some relocations of, of um, the mailboxes in the downtown. Uh, as far as refuse pickup goes, this is where I especially praise our resident engineer <laughs> Clay Keller, that's a big challenge, uh, you know, recycling garbage. Uh, Clay did a really good job with that. That's a very challenging item to coordinate, um, especially with all the street work that we have going on and the closures. Um, but generally speaking, have your trash out early. Clay will be trying to work with uh, the refuse and recycling haulers to make sure that they can be accommodated and get those pickups made. Sometimes that's just the contractor wheeling things out in the street and, and, and doing their part to help out um, no change, no current changes to commercial pickup. And again, arrangements will be made with individual businesses when there are issues. Please let Clay know. Um, if there's missed pickups, which are bound to happen, we'll try to get those, you know, uh, followed up with accordingly. And uh, last bullet point I already made. Uh, business notifications, uh, information uh, transfers, written notices are going to be provided for the driveway closures and the water outages. Um, we're going to have, as Derek mentioned, the weekly progress uh, Zoom meeting. I really encourage you to attend that. We didn't get a lot of attendance on the first phase. Um, I think it's because there was just a lot of great information that went out and notifications, but it's a good way to get a really good understanding of what's going on with the project. So if you have the opportunity to, to join in those meetings, we'd love to have you there. Um, and then the weekly updates, Derek will email those out again every Friday, typically. Um, it'll be that uh, one to two page flyer. Uh, it'll have a little bit more narrative to it in the email body itself. 
Um, and then those particular, the, the flyers themselves, uh, generally speaking, will be posted to the website. Clay, I don't want to overpromise, but are you planning on also distributing those as well, door to door? Yeah, well, we, I think we just have a little bigger footprint for the senior. Right, and so our resident engineer, the uh, he had replied that you know last, on last year's project we uh, we did hand those out and, and we will uh, strive to do that as well. Again, pass out the the weekly updates. It's just nice if you can get a printout and you want to post that uh, in, in your business uh, or your residential building. That that would be appreciated. Um, and again, you can just go right to the website, or if you want uh, Derek to send that out to you, just give him your email address. Uh, business responsibilities and, and residential properties too. Uh, please keep the RE, the resident engineer, aware of any issues. Um, if there are any, I don't think this is gonna be very common, might be, it might be common with some of the uh, residential buildings, but if you have irrigation, pet fences, et cetera, let us know, even if they're not necessarily in public right of way, we are going back onto property in some situations. So let us know if those facilities exist so we can do what we can to try to protect them. Uh, anything that's generally speaking in the right of way, please get it out of there. Um, so if it's you know between building to building on uh, Pennsylvania, Main Street, et cetera, um, and, and it's something personal to you and, and you don't want it to, to be lost, uh, please relocate it, get it out of there. Um, if it's something that you can't conveniently do, let us know. Um, we can we can try to work with the contractor to to accommodate getting that out of there. Um, but otherwise, you know, we're pretty much going to be taking over uh, building to building uh, within the right of way. Um, and oddly, some private property, uh, some of the sidewalks, for example, on Main Street are actually private property that we have easements for. Um, from the uh, 1985 circa, uh, circa 1985 streetscape project. So again, all those items will be, you know, um, have to be removed in order to do the work. And then encourage customers to park uh, uh, vehicles in the village's parking lots. General safety considerations, please exercise caution driving through the site, follow the signage. Uh, Really appreciate everyone driving slowly. Um, I was nearly struck last year on, on Dwayne Street. Um, so tell everyone to be mindful of that. Just be, you know, be very cautious. Um, there's there's going to be instances of people being frustrated and speeding through the, the work areas. Uh, if those issues happen, you know, you could certainly report them to, to Derek and Clay. Uh, we will pass that on to the police department. They're very good about uh, getting officers out there if, when they do have the resources. Um, to try to help out with uh, addressing some of those issues. Uh, keep back from equipment and then the, uh, no cell phone use, that referring to no cell phone, cell phone use while driving. Um, having said that, I've also seen people, you know, just generally speaking, walking around in the downtown, looking down at their phones. Um, probably not the best year to be doing that just with all the construction, excavations, et cetera. So uh, please just be as safe as you can uh, through the site. We don't wanna see anyone hurt. Uh, watch for uneven surfaces, keep back from excavations and equipment. That concludes our presentation. I'm going to uh, turn it back over to Derek here who will uh, head up answering any questions. Thank you very much.